That's really bad. That's like pure mold. I'm, I'm growing something in there. Hello everyone and welcome to the 14th episode of the Blind Pinterest Challenge. Bet you thought you were going to get a bit of weird editing there? Nope. Now if you saw the last episode of the Blind Pinterest Challenge, you'll know things got a little out of hand. Things ended up costing me a lot of money. Oh, it's worse than I thought. It's way worse than I thought. It's so bad. No wonder I never have any money. So in today's episode, it is all about cheap crafts. That's what I want to find. I want to go on Pinterest and find the cheapest things I can possibly make. So let's jump onto Pinterest and see see what it has to offer. Okay, so I think this looks quite interesting. I do think I've got a light fitting somewhere in the studio. I think I've got a few, so that won't cost me any money. And I think they've basically just used cotton wool or something similar. I might have to have a little think about this one, but I'm going to give it a try. I think I can definitely do something similar to that. I think this will be a second one that I'm going to try, and I think it will be relatively cheap to make because it looks like it's just some tiles glued together, and then it turns into like a little planter. And I think they look really nice, actually. I'm terrible at keeping plants alive so they will die but I think I can make that so that's another one okay I am cheating a little bit on this one because it has given me some instructions and I think it'll be relatively cheap to make it depends how much that paint is whatever paint they're using maybe I could try and zoom into this photo it looks like they're using a frosted paint so it must exist hopefully it's not too expensive do I want to make anything else? This could be relatively cheap because I have an old pair of jeans and I think I've already got an embroidery hoop from a craft kit. Or it might have been a subscription box that I ordered. I know I've got one lying around somewhere. So I think this might cost me absolutely no money at all. And I think it's quite cool. So I think we'll do that one as well. Do I want to make anything else? Okay, and because all the others are relatively simple, I think. I hope. I think I'll try and do this one. And again, I'm cheating a little bit because it has given me, well, it's given me all the instructions, let's face it. So basically, you just need an old piece of wood, put some tape around it, paint it, take the tape off, put some hooks on, and then you get a lovely cloth hanging rail. And I think the finished result looks really nice. And it shouldn't cost too much money either. I think it will be relatively cheap. Okay, so that'll be my cheap crafts for today's episode. And we'll soon find out whether they were actually cheap or not. Knowing my luck, they won't be. Okay, I'm back, and I thought I would start off with the frosted glasses because I just looked at the instructions on the glass paint that I bought and apparently it needs to go in the oven for 40 minutes. I didn't realise. Wish I'd read it sooner. So I'll do that so I can get them in the oven. Otherwise I'm going to be here all day. Right, so I've got two glasses here and I've matched them the best I could. And it's quite a simple one really. All I need to do is tape off the bottom part at like an angle and then just paint it, I think. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Stay still. Oh, actually, do it like that. Well, that makes more sense. And does that look right? <sighs> we'll soon find out. Okay, my two glasses are taped up. Perfect. Now, I couldn't find exactly what kind of frosted glass paint they used, but instead I found some transparent glass paint and a frosted medium. And apparently you mix these two together and that creates a coloured frosted glass paint. It should do anyway. If it doesn't, then I've been lied to. I don't know how much I should mix in. Why do they write on these so small? I can't see. It doesn't tell me how much to mix in, so I'm just going to wing it. Okay, so I've got some paint. It doesn't look frosty, so I am a bit concerned. And in the pin, they used a sponge for this, so I'm just going to copy them. Right, I'm not going to let it dry. I'm going to peel the tape straight off. And hopefully it doesn't run everywhere. That's looking okay so far. Hopefully it'll turn frosty. I feel like I should have been a bit more accurate and maybe spent a little bit more time placing my tape because it doesn't look as nice as theirs. But once it's dry and baked, it might look great. Right, so this is what they look like at the minute. But obviously I'm going to wait for them to dry. I'm going to put them in the oven and then hopefully we'll have something that is very similar to what they have in their pin. Okay, so I thought we'd move on to the jeans and embroidery hoop thing. And this has to be like the easiest one that I'm gonna do all day. It's just, it's gonna be so simple. Now, right, so I've got my old pair of jeans here and my embroidery hoop, and I think I just need to cut my pocket out. All right, there we go. And them jeans, they were kind of like a hybrid between joggers and jeans because I really wanted to get into starting to wear jeans. But it just didn't happen. I just don't like them. They annoy me. I just find them uncomfortable. They're just tight and you just can't move. Right, so now we just need to place my 
pocket in here. I've just realized I haven't left myself enough room at the top. I really needed to cut that pocket in half. Start again, luckily it's got another pocket on them. We will get there, this is supposed to be the easy one. So yeah, you want space at the top here. I don't know why I'm struggling with this so much for. Come on, get in. Urgh. Bloody hell. Take that completely out, see if that helps. Oh, I don't think this screw's gonna work. Why isn't this working for? Maybe the fabric's too thick, I don't know. Maybe I wanna trim a bit more off. I think it's because as soon as anything textile related comes up, our brain's just like, nope, nope, not happening. Even the most basic thing, it just won't reach. You know what I could do is I could just glue this round. This isn't going well. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm getting really frustrated. I feel like I've cut it too short now. What the issue I'm having is it won't fit. Like the hoops won't kind of connect together because the fabric's too thick. So I'm just gonna hot glue it because that wasn't working. And if anyone knows what I was doing wrong, let me know in the comments. I'm either putting it down to the fact that my fabric was too thick and my hoop was really shit. They're the two factors. It has nothing to do with me, I swear. It doesn't. I don't think this episode's off to a good start. It's actually, it's, it's really not. It's not off to a good start at all. Two of like the easiest things that I've picked. I don't think they're gonna look very good. And I don't think they're gonna be like their pins. Okay, so what should have taken me like five minutes? Two minutes? Not long at all. Took me about a half an hour. So we have expectation. Reality. And you know, it looks very similar to what they have in their pin. And still puts... Oh, I've just realized I can't put anything in the pocket because I cut it in half. So look. It just slides out. <laughs> uh, I hate my life. I hate my life. Why am I so bad at things? But how much did it cost us? It cost me no money at all. No, I'm not celebrating. I'm not celebrating at all because this was just a disaster. Right, but I've added a little bit of string so we can hang it on the studio wall. Not that I really want to put it on my wall anymore. There we go, disappointment. And the worst part is, I've got another kind of fail coming up too. If I haven't exposed myself for being shit at crafts already, this is the episode where it's gonna all come crashing down. Okay, so next up, I took a trip to the tile store to find some tiles for the little tile planters, and they had a huge range available. I was pleasantly surprised. And then next up, I decided to go and try and hunt down some plants. Unfortunately, at the DIY store, they only had a very limited amount of plants available. So I got a eucalyptus and two spider plants, I think. And I also bought myself a bag of compost. And then it was just time to glue these tiles together. And I was debating whether to use hot glue, but I thought that was gonna be far too weak for tiles. So I decided to use some super glue instead. And then once I was finished with that, because obviously the tiles are square, they didn't all kind of match up and it didn't all slot in perfectly fine. So I was left with really big gaps down each corner and I was just going to kind of leave it but then I was worried all the soil would fall out and it would just get messy so I decided to take some grout and just go all the way up the sides of them just to fill in any of the gaps but I did leave some space at the bottom just for drainage and I also tried to make it look as intentional as possible so it didn't look like a mistake and then we have something that looks like this at the minute and it's not looking too bad actually I'm not I'm not too disappointed. There were a couple of fails in there and things didn't go quite as planned. I think the biggest mistake I've made is I've made them on like a huge scale. I think theirs were quite small. I think theirs were extremely small actually. I think they were about a quarter of the size of these ones. But anyway, just time to plant some plants in them. Well, that ended up being way messier than I thought it was going to be. Should have definitely done it outside. But we have expectation and reality. And you know what, considering I started off a little bit rough, I don't think they've turned out too bad. I actually quite like them. I think I just made mine slightly too big. And by the way, if this one ends up dying, it's not my fault. I think it's already dead. It's looking very limp, but hopefully it's new space will just spring it back to life. And in fact, I'll find a place on my shelves so you can see them. And then if 
in one video they just suddenly disappear. You know what happened to them? They died. <laughs> oh my god. What the hell? Oh no. Hang on, I'm gonna have to show you this. This is so bad. We're taking a massive detour in this episode for one second, because if you saw, was it my last episode of the Blind Pinterest Challenge? I think it was where I made DIY air fresheners with gelatin. I clearly don't pay attention to my shelving or what I've done or anything, but look at the state of that. It's gone all moldy. Oh. That is so foul. That's really bad. That's like pure mold. I'm, I'm growing something in there. If you ever did watch the episode where I made these, don't make these clearly because it's just, just a little bleh. <laughs> right, we're back to normal scheduling and at least I've got some more space for my plants. I'll put that one there so you can definitely see it. Them gelatin air fresheners have really thrown us now. That was proper bad. Right, but how much did them planters cost us to make? So they cost me $12.94 each. And that was the plant included, the tiles, the soil, all of that stuff. So it's, it's not too bad, but it's definitely not cheap. Okay, I've just checked on my glasses and they're all finished now. They're dry and cooled down. So we have expectation. Reality. Mine look absolutely nothing like theirs. Theirs are way more frosty and a, a lot neater. Mine are just, they're just not very good, are they? I feel like I may as well have just painted them in acrylic paint. But anyway, I'll find a place on my shelf for them as well. I put them quite high up because I don't like them. But how much did I spend on those glasses? And I have a feeling this one isn't gonna be cheap as well. <gasps> it did not cost me that much money. That's a lie. Start that again. Oh my god, it did cost me that much money. Okay, so for those two glasses, it cost me £13.83. So if I divide that by two, that's £6.90-ish. £6.90 a glass. It's quite expensive. I do still have some leftover frost and medium, even though I did nothing, and the glass paint. But I still wouldn't really consider that cheap. And I don't particularly like spending that much money on things that don't look very good either. Okay, next up is the wooden clothes hanging rail. And for this, I decided to chop an old piece of wood to a length that I wanted. Next up, I just sectioned all the pieces of wood off with some electrical tape ready to be painted. And I wanted to do it in a very geometric kind of design like they did in the pin. Once that was done, I just painted over the top of it with some normal white emulsion paint. And then I didn't want to let the paint dry. I wanted to keep it wet. So I peeled all of that kind of tape off whilst the paint was still wet. And I was actually quite surprised at how all right it was looking. It was looking pretty decent. I surprised myself. And the next step, I just went over it with a nice thick layer of matte varnish, just to really seal in the paint and protect it and whatnot. And then finally, I just attached all my clothes hooks to the finished plank of wood. So we have expectation and reality. And I think mine looks really good, actually. Considering we've had some proper shitters in today's episode, this one is one that I think has turned out really good. And if you're not like an expert at DIY or anything, it's a proper easy one. It might look kind of intimidating. It might look that it would be quite hard, but it's not. It's really, really easy to make. And I've also attached a little hook on the back so I can hang it on the studio wall. Oh, I need to be taller. <laughs> I can't reach. I'm standing on my swivelly chair. It's not the safest thing to do, but I just can't reach it. There we go. I don't think it's very safe up there. I hope that hook holds it up. Otherwise, it'll crash down and destroy a lot of things. But how much did my wooden clothes rail cost? I actually only spent $10.99 on it, and that was just for the metal hooks. So I would consider that quite cheap for what it is. It's a substantial piece of furniture. Okay, now we're moving on to the final craft of today's episode, and it's the cloud light fitting, and I'm pretty excited for this one. I hope mine's going to turn out just as good as theirs did. So for this, I thought it would be good to start off with a decent base so I've got this paper lampshade unfortunately mine's broke which is quite annoying but never mind because all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape this up anyway and I'm gonna actually just tape this light inside probably is not the safest thing to do but it'll be fine it'll be fine it won't set a fire at all this is a little bit fiddlier than I thought it was going to be yeah I think that's good enough now I also bought a giant thing of stuffing and I think they use it for like pillows and toys and stuff. And I think I'm basically just gonna hot glue it all to this paper lantern and hopefully we'll get a cloud. I'm thinking hot glue wasn't the best idea for this, but I don't have anything else. I really don't. It's just gonna take us a long time. 
But I just tried to take it outside to varnish it and hoped that that would work. But the varnish just wasn't sticking enough, so it's back to hot gluing. But hot gluing isn't working very well either. It's gonna work though, I'm gonna make it work. I'm finally done. Ah, oh, today has gone on forever. It was definitely a crafting marathon. But anyway, we have expectation. Reality. And you know what? It looks like a cloud and it looks okay. It's very, very fragile. I could easily pick all this off if I wanted to. But I think I'm gonna try and find somewhere in the studio for it, for some reason. And also switch it on to see what it looks like at night time. Because believe it or not, I started this episode in the morning and now it's evening. <laughs> it's how long I've been at it. I have no space for this. There is nowhere to put it. I found a place that took me ages. It lives there now and I'm pretty sure it's gonna fall down. It is not secure at all. But I actually think it looks quite cool when it's lit up. I think it doesn't look too bad. Let's knock these lights off, hang on. Yeah, I think that looks super cool. It, look, it definitely looks better when it's lit up. But how much did I spend on this lamp? Well, this light fitting, this light up cloud. Surprisingly, I only spent 13 pounds and 90 pence. And I think that's pretty damn good. If it came to it again, I would have used a spray adhesive because hot glue wasn't the right decision for it. But I think that does it for today's episode of the Blind Pinterest Challenge. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And I'll actually put a poll, I think in, is it in this corner? It might be in that corner, I have no idea. But there'll be a poll up there somewhere and you can vote on which one you think was best. And if you come across any of the craft projects or anything like that you want to see tested out on the channel, then feel free to leave your suggestions in the comments down below. Anyway, I'll see you next week for a brand new video. Bye.